Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Fallon. Welcome to Dental Excellence. This is my 15th video for my Dental Excellence series. And today, I would like to share with you some uh, clinical video filmed in my microscope just from two days ago uh, for ultrasonic preparation techniques. And I haven't shared a lot of posterior clinical preparation video because it is difficult to videotape that, especially upper teeth uh, with a mirror and with the water spray, etc. But I filmed this the other day and I was looking at the video today to edit it and I liked it enough to share with all of you because I think that the message is important. You'll not see things because of the water spray and it's not the most perfect uh, video that I've presented, but it's such a cool technique with such a cool instrumentation that I felt that the message was important and I wanted to share that with you. So let's get right into it. Um, I'm using the Cavo Sonic Flex Scaler with specially designed tips. If you were to um, look on the Cavo website, look up Cavo Sonic Flex tips, and you look at preparation tips, these are specifically designed tips to prepare um, box forms and posterior teeth. And I use these for inlays, onlays, and even for direct class two restorations. And if you could imagine, the way these are designed is the diamond coating is on the inside of the box, but the outside wall of the tip, the outside wall of the tip is flat and it's smooth, so it will not cut the tooth. It will not prepare the tooth. So this is a huge advantage when you're working in a box in a tight area with a virgin tooth next to it that you do not want to damage. Um, I use these all the time. I use them every day in clinical practice. So if I'm doing a um, preparation where there's caries interproximally on one tooth but not the adjacent tooth, so I just want to prep the tooth that has the caries in the box, um, I use these tips once I've thinned out the enamel enough that I can use the tip easily and efficiently because this won't cut the box form, but it will refine the box form. And the nice thing is it will not damage the adjacent teeth. So what I do is I prep the, the box form leaving a shell of enamel so I don't actually use my rotary instrument near the adjacent tooth. And then I go in with this to finish the box form and uh, outline form of the preparation. This case that I'm gonna share with you is an onlay preparation, but you can use this for a really conservative little slot class two uh, preparation with uh, posterior caries if the tooth didn't have anything other than interproximal caries and the adjacent tooth again didn't need restoration. Um, this is exactly the technique that I would use. So I'm going to share with you the video. I've edited it down. Um, it's about six minutes long but uh, again you'll see some water spray. You won't see certain things but there's enough here that it's so powerful to see how these are effectively used and I think it's so uncommon that people are using these that I want to get the message out. This is a good thing to increase the precision and um, quality of your dentistry. So let's check out the video. Here she is here. So, okay, so at this point, I've, um, at this point, I've prepped the tooth by taking out the old restoration. So there was a large old amalgam here um, and the patient had, uh, a food trap on the distal um, and there was caries on the mesial but it hadn't been prepared yet. I'm actually going to do a onlay for this tooth, a porcelain onlay, probably a monolithic Emax onlay would be my restoration of choice but um, I need to refine the preparation and so there's some caries on the mesial, there's some caries on the distal, I'm going to clean that up uh, the distal wall doesn't have a shell because there was an amalgam there. The mesial wall has the shell that I described to you, so you'll be able to see that technique. And you can imagine it being done with just a little slot preparation as well. So let's watch this. So if you look here, here's the distal. You can see it needs further preparation. There's a fracture line and there is some caries and some uh, enamel that needs to be cleaned up. Here's the mesial. You can see there's mesial caries. The adjacent tooth does not need to be prepared on the distal. 
So here's the sonic instrument going in place. You can see the flat surface again. Adjacent teeth next to this prepared tooth do not need any kind of preparation. So we want to use this to get rid of that caries and to extend our box form so that the enamel of the box of the onlay, of the, the wall of the onlay is not decayed and there's a little bit of decay there. So you can see, you know, you can't see this perfectly, but you can see how I'm positioning this and then we'll, uh, we'll rinse the mirror off so you, that you can see. I'm going to change the mirror because that one's a little, little uh, uh, fogged up. But basically you get the idea. Um, so here we are, we're just prepping this. Again, I'm going to change the mirror so you have a good view in a second. And this instrument just goes in. It doesn't cut super fast. It's not super fast the way it cuts, but that's a good thing because you're going for precision, not speed. So this isn't a bad, it's a bad quality to have. It's not as fast as a rotary diamond. So now here's a, uh, here is a better mirror. Let me pause it. If you look here, typically when I'm finished prepping with that instrument, there's some little uh, kind of ragged areas of enamel, and I use a scaler, a posterior scaler. You can use an enamel chisel just to smooth the enamel margin by hand. And there I needed to extend it further palatally because there was decay on the wall. So there I've extended it. And now here's where you can see the uh, distal margin and now I'll go to the mesial margin. So you can see here, this is if you can imagine the same as if you had a small slot here and then you want to prep the uh, box form. Now I've thinned out the enamel enough that the box form can be prepped with the sonic instrument. There's some decay on the mesial, uh, sorry, the um, buckle portion of the box or the contact here. So I'm going to have to prep this a little further, but I want to keep it as conservative as possible. So I'm going to try the, the uh, instrument in first, the sonic prep tip in first, and then see how much I need to prep this with a rotary instrument, which I'll use a KS0. So you can see there, we've got carries. We're going to try in the sonic preparation tip. This is an opposite tip to the one I used on the distal, obviously. I had to switch it out. You can see it's, it needs to be slightly wider, plus I want to extend this to the buckle anyway because of the carries. So I'm now going to go in with a KS0 diamond, and I'm going to just prep this a little bit. Again, sorry it's not the best clinical video, but it's pretty darn good. Um, it's hard to film upper posterior back uh, molars in the microscope. But um, I think it's good enough that you get the idea. And as I said, I believe this is an important message. So you can see I'm leaving that shell of enamel. And I'm just changing the box form a little bit. So the diamond uh, uh, sonic preparation tip can fit in there. But you see that that shell of enamel is there. And now I'm not going to go anywhere near the rotary instrument to the distal wall of the bicuspid. I'm going to go in with this sonic instrument. And now I just turn this on and this will just take that little shell of enamel out immediately. You can see it's gone already. And now I still have to extend this to the um, buckle a little bit more because there is carries there. So I'm going to make the box a little wider until I remove all the carries. And when I take this out, what you'll see is there's a little raggedness to the enamel. This is typical with the sonic instruments. And you could use a, a you know, an enamel chisel, or a, I, I just use a posterior 204S scaler to smooth out the box form. But I wouldn't go in with a rotary diamond and smooth that out. It's smoothable with uh, hand instruments. So you see I'm just extending this to the buckle a little bit because of the carries that was there. This is a fantastic instrument. Uh, if you see what I just did there, you know, made the box form with this instrument as opposed to a rotary instrument, it's, it's 
really truly fantastic. There's absolutely no way to nick or damage the adjacent uh, bicuspid, the adjacent bicuspid surface. Yeah, I think this is a powerful instrument in dentistry. Now, if you look when I focus this, there, you can see it's a little bit ragged. So there I'm going in with that uh, scaler and I'm smoothing out the enamel floor uh, uh, surface. And now you can see how smooth that is. Uh, just checking the occlusal amalgam that I removed on the bicuspid as well. And then the distal looks pretty good. So uh, I'm just trying to get it focused a little better. If you've ever used a scope in the poster, you can see how it's, it's harder to focus the video camera on the scope. <laughs> So that gives you an idea of all these margins. It's just really precision level of uh, smoothness and, and dentistry, really. That was a good image of it right there. So here is after I finished the preparation. Um, there's one little area I wanted to smooth still, which you'll see me do. But if you look here, we have good draw. We have perfect box forms. There's that little spot. I just want to smooth that. I'll use my scaler for that. Again, an enamel chisel could be used as well. But if you look inside the preparation here, it's actually really um, shiny. It's shiny there. And if you notice, I put something over top of it. That was glycerin. What we did in this case, and what I do in most of my online preparations, is I did an immediate dentin sealer stage or step where I sealed the inside dentin of the preparation with the immediate dental sealer technique. And I used a little bit of flowable plus the Optibond FL filled adhesive to fill in any undercuts. There were two undercuts, one on the palatal wall and one on that remaining mesial buccal cusp that I left. Now, if you're asking yourself why do you even leave that cusp, um, occlusally, when we checked before we started, there was no contact on that mesial buccal cusp. So I felt fine leaving it, even though it's, it's, it's not really big. There's no cracking there either, or internal fracture. So I felt okay leaving that. Um, there's a stained area on the palatal groove of the, um, you know, the, the palatal wall there, um, the fissure there. I, I checked it carefully. I don't believe there's caries there. I could have filled that. I wouldn't have included that in the prep because it would have changed the prep design dramatically. I could put a little occlusal type of or lingual filling there or palatal filling, whatever you want to call it. But it felt hard. We stained it with caries detector and it didn't really pick up a lot of stain. So I felt okay leaving that. Um, that little dark stained fissure. Um, but otherwise, this is the preparation design. And for my occlusion design members, uh, in this month's monthly webinar, I'm actually going to show the video, the rest of this video. I edited it out because it was going to get too long for a dental excellence video. But I'm going to show the video of exactly how I do this immediate dental sealer, immediate dentin sealer technique, and the flowable to. Um, uh, fix the undercuts and we'll talk about that. It's a really good technique for this kind of case. I use it on onlays and we'll talk about where I use it, where I don't use it. It's a technique advocated by Dr. Pascal Manier, who's brilliant. You know, he's a brilliant and artistic and, and just really a, ma a master of dentistry. So I'm going to talk about that during the November 2016 monthly occlusion design members webinar. If you, you're a member and you see this after, um, you can just look up in your membership site, your past monthly webinars, and look under November 2016, and you'll see uh, the me talking about this particular technique and sharing the video of how I did it. Um, so that's uh, basically that. If you look here, oh, there's me putting the glycerin on this. Gives you another view of the preparation shape. I think it's a beautiful, precise, smooth preparation. 
Um, if you look here, this is the uh, tips that we were using here, Cavo Sonic Flex tips. Um, and it's just, if you Googled it, Cavo, Cavo Sonic Flex preparation tips or tips um, or instruments, you'll see the web page that shows all of this. And I think it's really helpful. They've got micro dentistry tips for small areas of root caries. They have, um, uh, well, the chamfer tips I actually had to buy from Comet, K-O-M-E-T. I have some chamfer tips, round-ended chamfer diamonds that fit in the Sonic Flex scaler, but I bought those from Comet. But Cavo has a nice selection of tips for these types of procedures. And if you're, um, as I said, if you're an Occlusion Design member, uh, during this month's webinar, we will show more of this case, this particular preparation, because I think the immediate dental and sealer technique is, is quite good for onlays. So I wanted to share that with all of you. And um, I also have some video from this case uh, using my laser to remove the por old porcelain veneers, which I'll share with you because um, uh, it's kind of effective in certain specific instances. So I'll share with you what I think about that and how we use that. I've got video that we'll edit and share during the monthly webinar. If you're not an Occlusion Design member, um, my question would be, why not? <laughs> it's an awesome program. Um, <laughs> anyway, if you're, if you're interested in learning more, um, I'll put a link below this video where you could uh, register to watch my new tutorial, my new video tutorial, which is a longer video than the longer training video than the dental excellence videos. It's called Creating Stunning Provisionals. It shows you my fabrication protocol for creating provisionals in the mouth, taking them out of the mouth and contouring them and then cementing them back in. So it goes over actually creating these in the mouth, how I go about doing that, and then how I contour them outside the mouth. And so that's a really good tutorial. If you're interested in that, sign up to watch that tutorial. And if you're interested in occlusion design, there is a one-time offer to join occlusion design during that tutorial at the end, just to give you a heads up. Um, if you don't take us up on the offer and you go back and sign up to watch it a week later, you'll be given the video without the offer. It's just the way we've set it up. Uh, to try and make that a single time offer, not uh, something that you could, you know, sign up for a week or two later. It's just to create uh, legitimacy when I say, you know, this is the offer to join Occlusion Design. If you'd like to join, take me up on it. Otherwise, uh, no problem. Uh, join me for some of my other free training. Uh, so that's basically Dental Excellence 15. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, this the Creating Stunning Provisionals video tutorial will be available. I'm not sure how long I'll leave it posted, but for, you know, the next couple of weeks, maybe a month, it depends on um, what, ne what ne other to, uh, training that I create in the next little while. I'm pretty active creating different training videos for all of you. So once again, thank you for joining me for Dental Excellence. Uh, I'd like to say that I believe that you can do this kind of dentistry. It's really a foundational belief for me. And I believe that beautiful dentistry with precise fit and occlusion is not just for the gurus. So remember, you can do this kind of dentistry. And thank you for joining me, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.